I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's a Hindi project. And I said, yeah, of course I've heard about it. Uh, I know Nick and uh, everything else. So, uh, but they've done a great job, guys. Uh, from what I understand, they raised $10 million. I was going to tell you more about it. But they raised $10 million, and their market cap is down $15 million. So uh, in the current landscape, that's a hell of a job. OK, it's absolutely fantastic. So I will let Nick Sapinaro tell you more about it. Please welcome to the stage, Nick Sapinaro. Thanks, Bruce. Good to see you. Yeah, I can see you too. How is everyone today? Good, 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 good. So I'm here today at probably one of my favorite crypto conferences of the year. Thank you. World CryptoCon. And I'm ecstatic and honored to be on this stage to talk to you guys about a topic that I think we're all thinking about all the time, which is mass, mass adoption. And I, my opinion on why we haven't achieved it and some of the strategies that we are taking in order to achieve it in the long term. But step one is we have to escape this echo chamber that crypto has become. It really has just become a roundabout of the same ideas and talking about the same things and actually not expanding outside of the echo chamber. And I'm hearing the same thing over and over again. It needs to be easier. It needs to be more scalable. We need better education. We need better crypto banking solutions. So if we know all this, oh, we're geniuses. We must know why isn't it happening? When mass adoption? Well, there's still some problems, right? And I don't want to be all doom and gloom because there are companies that are doing amazing things in this space, but here are the problems that exist. First of all, we're creating these extremely friction heavy applications that really don't do much in the real world. We're so focused on the features, we're, we're missing out on the benefits. Really no one outside this echo chamber cares about decentralization or sovereign identity or being their own bank as much as we do. We have to give them the tools that benefit them in that way without them needing to know about it. And that all comes down to building, as I said, benefit-driven pathways to adoption. And that's online and off. What we need to do is take an, a user experience first focus, which I'm seeing more and more companies starting to do, which is amazing. We need to stop forcing people into crypto and, and lead them into crypto by creating a, a hybrid approach that gives you a pathway in and out of fiat currency. And by giving those benefits, people will start to drive towards cryptocurrency. And finally, we need to package all of these services up in one beautifully vertically integrated ecosystem. So one actually perfect example for uh, vertical integration and a case study that I find really prescient and relevant is Tesla. Tesla saw the fragmentation of the automotive industry. And, and a lot like crypto, the automotive industry is heavily friction, friction heavy and has a lot of fragmentation. There's third party uh, companies basically at every stage of the automotive process from design, manufacture, retail, and of course, fuel. What Tesla did is they took all of that and packaged it up into one amazing vehicle. And they've actually, in doing so, completely changed the way that we think about purchasing a car. And they're forcing change on the entire automotive industry. For us to emulate what Tesla did, we have to understand our own value chain in cryptocurrency. Right now, the issue is that there's too many steps and there's far too many options. And it's really, for a newcomer, almost impossible to know where to start and who to trust. If you do take the dive as a newcomer, every step you take, it doesn't feel like I'm getting closer to the goal of taking control of my finance. It just feels like more work. And each time that a user feels that friction, we're, we're at risk of losing more people, right? So each step basically loses roughly 20% more users. I'll talk about that in a second. What we need to be building, and I like to use this example of the cartoon character listfully going towards a pie on the windowsill. Your users are the cartoon character. The pie is your product. And if it's too friction heavy, it's like closing the window and completely eliminating that beautiful smell. If you look at the value chain as it is today, we're looking at Coinbase as a starting point for most people. And just to be clear, I'm not trying to discount any of these services that are listed on this screen. They're all incredibly important to this community. 
But what I'm trying to illustrate is that it's a fragmented system. You start on Coinbase, you get through the 20 step process to actually buy cryptocurrency. Then you have to go elsewhere to buy altcoins if they're not listed on Coinbase. You have wallets that you have to figure out. If you want to diversify your assets, there's more to learn. And eventually, if you even get to it, you might learn how to earn money with your cryptocurrency by staking or running a masternode. But by the time you get to that point, you've lost most people, which is why we're not seeing more mass adoption. The other issue is that if you do get through all of that, it doesn't feel like you've generated enough value. Why am I investing in this if it's so hard? And why am I not just using the, the traditional finance applications that exist today? And it's really, it's not because these apps are bad, it's because they're difficult to find, they're difficult to navigate, and then transitioning between each one becomes really time consuming. You're losing money, and time is money as well. And then, in America at least, you have to report these transitions and movements on your taxes. How do you reconcile all of the activity? It's really difficult near impossible depending on your, your pathway to adoption. In order to solve this problem, what we need to do is integrate this value chain just like Tesla did, right? So what do we need to do? First of all, everyone who has a crypto project needs to take a look at their U UX and consider how it relates to traditional applications that you see today. If it's not as good or better, start over. We need to see more interoperability between banking and crypto. Uh, and then once we do find that interoperability between banking and crypto, then we can begin to offer a fuller suite of financial services all in one place. And then finally, we can just stop using fiat altogether. So let's take it from step one, right? User experience. There's a massive difference between UI and UX. And I love this example because everyone has had a hard time getting ketchup out of that glass bottle. And we know how much easier it is to use the plastic bottle. It's already upside down, it's easy to squeeze. Even a person who somehow hasn't come into contact with ketchup can figure that out. What we're seeing right now in a lot of cryptocurrency applications is confusing, unintuitive user interfaces and user experiences that lack any real detail or standardization and they're, and they're not lo good looking, they're ugly, right? Nothing against, again, any of the projects that I show in this presentation, they're purely examples. Dash is an incredible project, but you can see that this default wallet is almost identical to the wallet that sits next to it, which is for Jin. And this is a problem in forking, right? Because we're forking each other's projects and making no mm, material changes, let's say, we're seeing this, we're actually standardizing poor UI and poor UX. Not good. What we want to see is a familiar, understandable, and detail-oriented user interface because that's what people are expecting already. They're already using Cash App. They're already using Venmo. If you can't make it as good as that, they're just going to keep doing that. The other issue is fear. A lot of these applications actually elicit a sense of fear. People are scared to press send on a transaction. People are scared to even onboard themselves because you see things like, if you lose this information, your money's gone forever. Gone. If you lose your bank password, is your money gone forever? No. That's a problem. Recovering your funds, again, extremely compli complicated. And then the transaction times can be incredibly frustrating. What we need to do is make a welcoming, easy, and benefit-driven user interface that guides the user. Onboard them the normal way that they are used to. Sign up with your email, password, whatever, and then guide them down the path that they initially installed your application for once they're already in. Don't have them start with setting up a seed phrase and doing all these things that they're unfamiliar with. So now that you have a product that is user-friendly, what do you do with it? Well, the problem is a product isn't good enough, right? As I said in the beginning of this presentation, we need to integrate the entire value chain into one ecosystem. A great example of a product that failed, even though it was amazing, is BlackBerry, right? BlackBerry dominated the business world for the longest time, but they didn't keep up with Apple because Apple learned that if they created iCloud and could connect all of your devices into one amazing ecosystem, they could dominate not just the business world, but the retail world, world as well. The fact that you can copy and paste between your iPhone and your, and your iPad and your laptop is hugely beneficial and again, it's all about benefits, not features. 
And we're trying to do the same thing at Divi by creating an ecosystem of services that integrate with one another, standardize the process, and feel familiar and user friendly. Okay, now we have a product ecosystem. This is great. But now we have the big challenge of crypto and banking interoperability. Not the easiest path to follow because banks hate crypto, right? But there's a massive benefit of actually integrating with banks. First of all, if you can create a symbiotic relationship, and I'm not talking about just a partnership. Anybody can create a partnership. I'm talking about a symbiotic relationship where the bank and the cryptocurrency actually rely on one another. You can pass KYC and AML data back and forth privately without the need of a third party and allow users to use one service, whether they come into your bank in person or sign up online, they're able to use all of the suite of financial services that you provide. You can, of course, enable real world spending. All you have to do is apply for and receive your, your debit card. You can start spending crypto or fiat in the real world. Exchanging assets, again, another piece of that value chain. With a bank license, you can do these things. All you need is a money transmitter licenses in the jurisdictions that you're operating in. And of course, with a bank, you can offer all of the financial services of the traditional world, bank accounts, remittances. So I'll take a second here because I'm pretty excited that we just acquired a remittances company in Costa Rica. Um, we called it Redivi, and we have two physical locations in the real world. And we've been setting up these locations roughly 300 meters away from Western Union locations. And what people can do is they can come into the store and there's already about roughly $100,000 worth of volume going through each of one of these stores. They come into the store to send money back home and they're offered the ability to lower the fee on their remittance transactions by using something that they may or may not have heard of, cryptocurrency. Now, without the need of going to an exchange and learning about all of these different things in the value chain, you've just onboarded a new customer to cryptocurrency giving them a benefit that they can use time and time again. Obviously, we can store assets, transfer money all over the world, and then earn money by staking or running masternodes, all from within the same application. Does anyone know what a masternode is without reading? <laughs> a couple people. So a masternode is just simply a full node carrying a full copy of the blockchain. Usually they're hosted in the cloud and they secure and verify transactions in the network. For running these programs, you're, you earn a little bit of cryptocurrency. It's similar to mining, but it doesn't require the same investment in uh, equipment and things of that nature. That's technically what a, a masternode is. But a masternode is much more to me, and it's much more to Divi. For us, it was a way of building our network and securing it in a way that is incredibly difficult in, in other chains. What we did was we built a one-click version of these masternodes. Most masternode setups look like this and require that you have massive amounts of knowledge about PuTTY, Linux, maybe some development experience. And most of the services are actually deterring users from, from setting up a masternode by saying, this is challenging. If you don't think you are up to the challenge, don't do it. We didn't like that. We thought that crypto could be made easy and everyone should have the opportunity to earn. So we created a one-click version of masternodes. And all you have to do is fill your wallet with some Divi, click deploy, obviously unlock your wallet, and you can subscribe with PayPal or your credit card. And this is just a little video that one of our community members made. You can see all he's doing is going to PayPal, checks out, agrees, <laughs> 10 bucks a month, and he's back. And within 15 minutes, he'll have his very own masternode earning him cryptocurrency on a daily basis. He doesn't need his computer running at all in order to do this. We've been able to secure our network with over 56% of the coins in our economy in masternodes and far more in staking. So we have a very secure network as a result. Now, I have about five minutes left and I was going to talk about stop accepting fiat. And maybe we still will, but I actually, I actually want to take a second to just speak to you guys because this past two years since we, we did our ICO, I just have not been easy at all. And we've run into every possible issue you can possibly imagine from 
the day we launched the ICO with the Ethereum network slowing down and speeding up and CryptoKitties and the KYC AML FUD and people dumping on Cryptopia and then Cryptopia just disappearing with everyone's coins. Contractors screwing us over and taking hundreds of thousands of dollars out of our runway and you name it, right? It just has not been a straightforward path. So I just wanna say, you know, if you're working on a project, if you're out there, you're trying, just, just keep pushing. Because we're here today, two years later, we survived the entire bear market. We're still one of the most profitable ICOs of 2017, despite all of the bullshit. <laughs> so I just wanna, you know, say with my whole heart, you know, thank you to everyone who's here today supporting us. And, and if you're working on a coin or a project, just keep, just keep pushing. And, and, and you can succeed. Now, I do have a, a few minutes to talk about stopping the fiat addiction. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing. First of all, you need to insist that you get paid in crypto. If you're a true believer, then why are you being paid in fiat and then buying Bitcoin? Just be paid in Bitcoin. And then secondarily, you need to build a business that is exclusively accepting crypto, of course. This is gonna be a little bit more friction heavy, but one of the things that we are working on is called Permatech, and it's a digital nomad space in which anyone can come and work and live for a short period of time, sort of like a hostel. And inside this digital nomad ecosystem, you can only use cryptocurrency. Um, so right now you can use ETH, Bitcoin, and Divi, but of course we wanna add more coins to that, so if you're interested in that, please reach out. You can see Permatech is this orange, section of Rancho Delicioso, which is a piece of land that our, that our CEO owns. So I hope that this presentation has opened your eyes a little bit to how you can create better user experiences and woo, Tesla. <laughs> Thanks, Tesla. Um, so let's do this. Let's do this because I have two minutes left. Can I get everybody to, uh, to stand up? Go on, go on, stand up, don't be, don't be ashamed. All right, on the count of three, I want everybody to say stop accepting fiat, okay? One, two, three, stop accepting fiat! Thank you guys so much.